Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I am so delighted and grateful to have you tune in into tonight or today's episode. You know, it has been a while since we've connected and I just want to reach out to let you know I have not forgotten about my listening audience. It's a it's been a, a journey, it's been some struggles, but yet we are still moving forward towards the purpose that God has designed for this ministry. I am really excited. I am so honored and privileged that you've tuned in for today or tonight's episode. Listen, before we get started, I wanted to share with you a scripture in Psalms 118.24. And it says, this is the day that the Lord has made. It says, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today or tonight's episode is one where we will discuss a topic that all of us live with on a daily basis. Yes, on a daily basis. (laughs) And so... To kind of put out a little teaser of what the topic is going to be about tonight, the episode of what the topic is going to be about tonight, I want us to understand that oftentimes we struggle with this constant reminder. (laughs) Many days we struggle with this thing and we wrestle with this thing and we uh, go to sleep with this thing. We wake up with this this issue this this ism that constant constantly messes with our very core other times though we thrive we succeed we conquer we win we have great days and we celebrate and we and we go and enjoy the day because we have this thing, this issue, this ism in our lives. Oh, the fact of the matter is we are inconsistent with this thing, this issue, this ism that we live with on a daily basis. And during these inconsistencies, our response to this topic, and I'm about to get to in a second, Our response to this topic is what the Lord wants for us to see and to experience and to embrace God's amazing demonstration of his power working in our lives. (laughs) I know you're probably wondering what is Pastor Phil talking about? I hear him. He seems like he's rambling, but I'm going to get to the topic in a second. All right, all right. With no further ado, I'm going to tell you what the topic for tonight is. And it's the word pressure. (laughs) Yes. Oh, I knew you were probably trying to figure out where was I going with this. Yes, pressure is part of the family. Pressure travels with us. It gets on planes. It gets on Boats, it gets on trains. Pressure keeps you up at night. It talks to you during your work hours and even after work. It's an event where we see athletes perform with this thing called pressure. Entertainers stand before a live audience to provide shows and concerts with this thing called pressure. Think about the people that got police, uh, firefighters, healthcare providers, <laughs> doctors, lawyers, teachers, children. Everybody in this world has some form of pressure and that you respond to in a matter that's honorable. That's professional. That's um, that you're in control of this thing called pressure. Yes, we struggle and sometimes we succeed. But most of the time we are inconsistent when pressure begins to squeeze us, begins to change our continents. And what happens 
in today's world is that bad responses to pressure appear to be acceptable and even rewarded because God's standards are considered, considered, um, how can I say this? It's considered archaic and weak to many who live in a narcissistic world. And then there's the issue with pressure. Many of us, if we be honest with ourselves, we hate pressure. (laughs) We don't mind putting pressure on the foods that we cook because we benefit from those foods. We, We don't mind watching others being under pressure when they have to perform Um, in a football game, a basketball game, in golf, tennis, whatever the sport may be. We don't mind watching others being under pressure. But many of us really hate pressure. They deem or we deem pressure as a unnecessary need. Yeah, we do. You tell yourself, why do we have to deal with the known and unknown pressures? Why? What's the benefit? Why do we have to deal with this? I'm reminded of a story where when I used to play basketball as a young child and uh, before the season started, we oftentimes used to have to run these things called suicides and we had to run at a fast pace back and forth across the court. And we could not understand why the coach was punishing us. Why was he making us run to an exhaustion? We we were exhausted. We were tired. We were mad at him because he was pushing us to the brink of collapse. (laughs) And and because it's a team sport, all of us had to had to do it. There was no individuals that had to do it. We all had to do it. All 12 of us on the team, we had to actually run and run and jump and leap and slide and and all of the things that comes with the, the sport called basketball. But now I understand the reason why the coach had to put us through these these issues called pressure, because he knew that in the game, we would need those exercises in order to perform at the highest maximus capacity that we could possibly play. Yeah, even in the military, they push them to the brain. They call it boot camp. They call it boot camp where they have to go through these different types types of obstacles and they get so exhausted and they have to do push-ups and sit-ups and they have to climb up ropes and they have to slide on their bodies in order to prepare for war. Pressure is something. (laughs) But most of us don't like pressure. And you tell yourself, why do we have to deal with the known and unknown pressures. Why does this constant stress control my life? (laughs) Oh, I know that you asked this question over and over again. Why do I have to deal with this thing called pressure? Again, has everything to do with purpose. You see, your purpose Your gift that God has instilled in you empowers you to overcome and succeed in life. You see, purpose underlines why you exist. Why are you here? Yes, because purpose has to come to the forefront. The reason why Jesus died for you gave his life for you is for you to conquer the pressures that will stay with you all the days of your life. And I want to read for your hearing a very familiar passage of scripture. It's Psalms 23. Psalms 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. If we just start right there, the Lord is our shepherd. Sheep is under intense pressures because they have to produce for mankind. 
But the Lord or the shepherd oversees the flock to make sure that they become productive in life, that their purpose for existing is to bless others. The key that we have to understand and realize that the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. We won't have to look for any other vices because the Lord is our shepherd. He is the one who provides for us. He is the one who sustains us. He is the one that gives us keys to victory. We don't need anything else. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He makes us lie down in green pastures. God provides for us. God gives us things that we need in order to exist. He leads us beside still waters so we can go to the waters to refresh our our bodies, our souls, our minds. He restores our soul even when our soul becomes malnourished. He Our shepherd, Jesus Christ, is our shepherd, and he is the one who restores, who makes our soul sound and solid and stable. He leads us in the path of righteousness. That's the key. God wants to lead us in a path that's right for his name's sake. So when you are living right, when you are doing right, when you are Understanding what righteousness is. Righteousness is simply being in right standing with God. So even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though you walk through the pressures of life, even though you deal with pressures on a day in, day out basis, as soon as you wake up to the time you go to sleep, even though you walk and thrive and live in the valley of the shadow of death. Because see, what happens oftentimes, we don't understand that we could succumb to pressure. And so that shadow always looms largely over our very existence. And we have to understand that even though we walk through a valley, a a, a lowly place, the shadow that covers us, we don't have to fear is what it says. I will fear no evil. (laughs) Even though sometimes we feel like that Pressure is evil, but we don't have to fear it because guess what? God is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. See, as we go through these pressure moments in life, God is the one who provides relief. God is the one who comforts us during the times of pressure. The key is, though, you have to understand the path of righteousness. Oftentimes we get off the path to find something else that does not bring satisfaction to our souls. And then we find ourselves in a pit on the side of the road. Broken down is because we allow the pressures to overtake us, to overwhelm us. He says that his rod and staff, the thing that guides us, will bring comfort Then he goes on to says, the Lord says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. (laughs) Why does God say this? It's because he wants to invite our enemies, whatever that thing is, that pressure, that whatever that pressure is, he invites. He doesn't say you're not invited. He invites the pressures to come. To the table. Get that. Let that sink into your spirit. The Lord prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. So when my enemies sit down with me at my table, when those when the pressures of life sit down with me, (laughs) uh, we are to let the pressure know that we will not fall victim to the pressures. Then it goes on to say, you anoint my head with oil. (laughs) What that simply means is that he is letting us know that our head will be covered by him. The anointment is the power of God resting 
solely on your mind. It's to keep away those pressures. And oftentimes the shepherd, what he would do is he would head of the sheep. And that oil would send out a smell to keep the flies away, to keep the bugs away so they can move freely around to to gaze through the pastures. God anoints our head with oil and our cup, our heart overflows to the point where when pressure tries to sit on our hearts, it cannot enter in because God's presence overflows in our lives. Now, verse six in Psalms 23 says, surely goodness and mercy, God's love will follow us. <laughs> That's the good news is that even though you're going through pressures, we have been given a guarantee that his goodness and mercy, his love will follow us. And it's a maybe a couple of weeks out of the month or out of the year. It didn't say on Christmas or New Year's Eve. It didn't say on Easter Sunday morning. It says that his goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. People of God, the good news is while pressure is always at the door of our hearts, we don't have to succumb to these pressures. Do you hear me? We do not have to succumb to these pressures, but we need to embrace them knowing, knowing God's goodness and mercy. God's love will navigate us through these precious, these pressure moments. So let me give you the title for today or tonight. The title for today or tonight's episode is entitled Pressure is a privilege. I'm going to say that one more time. Pressure is a privilege. Now listen, St. John chapter 16, verse 33, it tells us, it says, in this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties. What, he, what Jesus was saying, you will continue to experience these types of pressures. But he says, but take heart. <laughs> I've conquered the world. God has given us his son, Jesus, and Jesus has given us the understanding. Yes, you're going to have to deal with pressure, but call it a privilege, not a, 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 a cancer. It's not a bad thing to have pressure in your life. You're going to experience. That's what Jesus was telling the disciples and he's telling us tonight. He says, you will continue to experience difficulties. Life is not easy, people of God. We are going to go through some difficult situations and circumstances. So we will experience these difficulties. But just understand something. Take heart. Grab a hold of this revelation. If Jesus has conquered the world and he has told us in St. John chapter 12, verse 14, he says that greater works will you do in my name. We can conquer the pressures of life. Pressure is a privilege. Everybody can't handle pressure. But the only reason why they can't handle the pressure is because they're not walking in righteousness. They're not understanding their purpose. And oftentimes when you don't understand your purpose, you will fall victim to the pressures of life and you will turn to drugs, alcohol. You will become a womanizer. You will begin to try different vices only to find yourself lost and in the dark. So to conquer the difficulties of this world, the pressures of this world, the sins of this world. We have to look at the examples Jesus demonstrated when he was under extreme pressure. We're talking about the son of God. We're talking about we're talking about Jesus Christ. The anointed one. 
We're talking about Jesus who are the who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are talking about Jesus, that he understands our difficulties. He understands what we are going through. And the book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17, I believe, it says that, that Jesus was tempted in all areas, but yet he did not sin. He did not succumb to the pressure, but he wanted to identify what we deal with. He understands because he had to go through it himself in order for, for him to love us the way he loves us. That's why he gave us life so you can live in his purpose for your life. What did Jesus do to handle pressure? That's the question. What did he do to handle pressure? Well, the key, the key to the whole thing that in Jesus' ministry while he was here on earth, he, Jesus Christ, never allowed pressure to dictate to him what the outcome was going to be. I'm going to say that one more time. Jesus never allowed pressure to dictate to him what the outcome was going to be. We should never allow pressure to dictate dictate to us what the outcome is going to be. So with the, it's this thing called confidence. It's this thing called faith. It's this thing called trust in Jesus that if he could do it, we can also overcome and conquer the pressures that's in this world. Now listen, there's a story in St. Matthew chapter 14, verses 19 through 21. This is the story where Jesus had to feed the 5,000. Now listen, this was a pressure situation. This was not just some easy journey through Jesus' ministry. It says that Jesus was given five loaves of bread and two fish and taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. Now, I'm going to say this one more time. He looks up to heaven. He gives thanks <laughs> and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate. <laughs> Somebody say they, they all ate. Yes, they did and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up the 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. <laughs> so here it is. They all, all they had was five loaves of bread and two fish. And they had 5,000 people standing there in need. That's pressure. And so Jesus, what he did was he demonstrated how to handle pressure. He did not succumb to the pressure. He could have easily sent them their way, all of the 5,000 people that were following Jesus. But no, what he did was he looked up to heaven because that's where the source of overcoming pressure. How about you? Do you look towards heaven? Do you see God when you? are standing in front of a need that's greater than yourself. Oftentimes we don't look up. We look down to the ground because now we feel defeated. We feel like we'll never overcome. We'll never be able to provide for our families. We'll never be able to uh, graduate from college. We'll never be able to, to have a home or to have a business. Whatever that thing is, we'll never have. But in order to overcome the pressures of life, it's a privilege. You have to look to heaven. And that's what Jesus did. He looked to heaven. <laughs> then he gave thanks. He didn't say, God, why did you put me in this predicament? Why did you allow these people to come follow me? Why are you putting so much pressure on me? What he said was he gave thanks to the Lord. Because he knew that this was a, a moment that God was going to answer the needs of 
5,000, not including women and children. There was over 15,000 people. A lot of theologians believe that it was more than 5,000. And they were able to feed the masses of people. And they all ate and were satisfied because of the need. And not only that they had enough to feed all of those people, they had 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of food that were left over. Because that's where we talked about in Psalms 23 that our cup overflows. Well, when you look to heaven and when you give thanks for those pressures, God will give you more than enough. Yes, God will give you more than enough. So Jesus shows us today or tonight, looking to God when things become overwhelming, we have to give thanks to God. We have to thank God for the pressure, for what you have in your hands. You may feel like that your small portion is not enough. Well, God is saying that he is the God of more than enough. And he is the one who opens opportunities for for him to provide everything you need to make a difference. See, when when you pray to God and you give thanks to God, when you look to heaven and when you give thanks, all of a sudden God opens the windows of heaven and he pours out blessings. More than you can receive. So pressure is a privilege. It's because now you can see. God, through Jesus, begin to work in your life. And lastly, satisfaction becomes a way of silencing pressure. (laughs) Because pressure becomes non-effective. See, when you put your faith in God, when you trust God, when you look to heaven, and when you give thanks for this situation that you're in, this pressure moment that you're in, Now, when God performs the miracle, when God opens the opportunity for you to succeed, oh, now pressure becomes non-effective. Pressure is now quiet and has to go away, has to leave the premises. It's because now you are operating in the right way. This is called righteousness. God has given us a path and those paths where we will come across many things, trials, tribulations. But we could be effective is because when we look to heaven and put our faith in God, God will provide things that will give us everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. But when you succumb, when you succumb to pressure, you miss an opportunity. To witness the greatness of God being demonstrated in your life. Don't allow the pressures to overtake you, to overwhelm you. Place your faith in God and God will show you your purpose for being in this world. So in closing, with so many challenges that we face, your gift is touching the hearts of individuals that need your light to shine. The book of James, chapter one, verses three through four, and I'm reading from the message translation. It says, you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and it shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, non-deficient in any way. (laughs) People of God, be encouraged. Just be encouraged to know that you're going to make it. But the key is you need to keep shining. Allow God to fill you with the nourishment that you need to see the pressure in a different perspective. Because he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or or think according to his purpose for your life. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for giving us this episode entitled Pressure is a Privilege. I pray for all of the listeners from around the world. Please, God, 
allow the words that were shared with your people, let it sink deeply into their heart, into their soul, into their mind. Let them embrace pressure because you are greater than any pressures that this world can ever bring to our lives. Strengthen us, O oh God. Give us the confidence, the boldness to know that if we step in front of the pressure and allow the pressures to sit at the table before us, that you will give us the confidence to know that with you, we can do all things because you give us, you have given us the victory in Christ Jesus. You say in your word that we can do all things through you because you provide the strength. You provide the courage. You provide us the insight to purpose that you have purpose for our lives. So bless your people from around the world, from all sectors of the world. Continue to mold and shape us into your image. Help us to not run away from pressure, but that we will stand in front of the pressures of life and that we will take heart because Jesus overcome the, ha, has overcome the world. We too can overcome the world. So God bless your people, strengthen your people, love on your people. Let them know that you are with us every step of the way. And though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will never fear anymore. Because you are with us, you comfort us, you give us direction, and you have promised us that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. So bless your people in a mighty way. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Well, people of God, that is it for today or tonight. The episode entitled Pressure is a Privilege. And please, if there's anything that we can do to help you along your Christian journey, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Once again, fulloflifesd at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. Please continue to sow into this ministry. Give what you can. We have a cash app that's called dollar sign full of life SD and the SD is capitalized. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have enjoyed this episode or any of the episodes that we put out each week, please continue to share these episodes with your friends and your family, your co-workers, whoever it may be, your mother, your grandmother. We do not discriminate from the small child to the elderly person. This message of hope is for the whole world to embrace. Once again, this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Pray for us as we pray for you. And let's continue to do this in Jesus' name. God bless.